Well, hello, everybody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get the stream guys. up to a uh, fucking spicy video of cars doing that, them, uh, them, them things. Yeah, that video is why we love racing games, really. <laughs> the only thing I really didn't touch on is... That's our podcast. No, <laughs> sci-fi. <laughs> why we sci-fi love racing aspect. games, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I do have I do have a non related thing I wanted to say before we we did all this. I went to donate plasma today and actually had to leave early because that shit takes like three hours, um, and I didn't even get to the point where they were taking my blood. And I was there for an hour and a half. But uh, when you prick someone's finger, where do you do it? Why do you do it? Where do I you don't do it? I don't do it when you get oh, your finger where? pricked. Where do they prick your finger? No one pricked my finger. In the mid, right in the middle of the pad, like the, the pad right in the middle of the pad, right? They do it on yeah. the tip, don't they? The pad or the tip, sure. Okay. This woman <laughs> turned my finger to the side and did it fucking under my nail. Basically. Oh. Uh, like wait. the side of my finger. Wait, wait, and you did that bleh. and you still didn't donate blood plasma today? <laughs> no. I'm I would have so went, went back in before I left and be like, listen, bitch, I don't know how to cuss her out. Dude, how to cuss her every out. time I put pressure on my finger, it feels like I have a hangnail. <laughs> it's the oh, fucking I'm, worst. I was so mad. I was like, what is bad. why? I, it also <laughs> hurt so bad. It was like, what the fuck? Why in the world of Alford, some people just want to see the world burn, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that lady was having a bad day. She was like, I'm going to take it out of somebody. Taking, that's right. She was yeah. super somebody. friendly, I got a, though. I got, a, super I got a splinter under there one time. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine but, if you had to do that for a doctor. <laughs> yeah, somebody's just like... Mm, yoink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was Gross. the worst. It was the worst. I was very confused, and I felt personally her- her- assaulted. And I was personally <laughs> hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I would have tried to watch her to see someone else do it to see if she just did the same thing. <laughs> Somebody else? Call, call her out if she didn't. Everyone in line is like walking out and leave. Just <laughs> telling people, leave. Don't do it. <laughs> Why, as you're we're standing in line, other people are like, what the fuck, man? Shaking their hands. It was wild, and I was I was not a fan. Um, but anyway, this is a video game podcast, if you haven't noticed. Bounty Board. I'm one of your hosts. Love Wub. My name's right above me. To my right is Sergeant Sodium. Say what's up, Ryan. Hello. Uh, beneath him is the one and only. Tick, 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 supreme. <laughs> Why is that so loud? So oh my lit. god. <laughs> <laughs> and then to text left is Sketch Sawyer. Say what's up, Ben. Hello, everybody. <laughs> That's great. We do a game podcast every week, and we're doing it one day early this week because Sarge is going out of town for some family hangouts, and uh, we wanted to talk about racing games because there's been a couple that came out that PQ'd our interest. Mm-hmm. Um, but before we get into all that and talk about those things, we got to talk about the news. There's a and lot of news. There's a bunch of news. Yeah, there's a bunch of news. Let's start with the first one that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. Uh, Amazon has already abandoned Crucible, which was that game yeah. that like showed up in May in early access that looked really good. Yeah. But it did. apparently played like poopy garbage. Um, and they <laughs> they released anthem? they released what'd you say? <laughs> like Anthem? Did you say Anthem? You an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> they released this game in uh, May uh, and then pulled it back off of Steam in like July. Like it went so poorly, they took it off so that you couldn't play it anymore. Man, sometimes uh, you just got to take that L. Yeah. Sometimes, you know? man. And sometimes you don't need to drag this shit out for three years and just go, oh, all right, guys, that didn't work. Hey, Let's guys, suck. they don't like this. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Someone said that in a meeting. No one cares, dude. Yeah. Uh, sa- sadly, uh, that's what also happened to uh, Disintegrations multiplayer that got taken down too. Yeah, Disintegrations multiplayer did get taken down. Um, yeah. Okay. The the story of that game is a bit of a Just bummer. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, sometimes you launch a thing and it's not it's not great. That game was in development for six years. Yikes. And barely lived in a playable state for six weeks. Sixty to eighty million dollars to develop and launch, dude. Oh. Yeah, it's Amazon. What if, though, you know, so listen, what the fuck listen. do they care? <laughs> it's all about testing, and yeah, like sure. they should have been testing every step of the way. Yep. Yeah, because I'm, apparently they were not at all. <laughs> and like, don't be optimistic. Don't be like, okay, well, this can do, no. Like, it, if it's a good, if it's some good shit, worth sixty to eighty million dollars to invest that's really the big thing about this is like what happens to the investors like well like well, what does this mean for the future of amazon gaming and investments mm-hmm. and money right sure and like if you're not testing every step of the way and like having a clear concise plan then this is going to happen 
And I feel like another topic that we're going to talk about tonight has something to do with something like this. But, you know, you're not listening. You're not testing and you're not listening. Yeah. I hate Just think you're going to do with, something awesome. I hate this line from this article that Ben shared that says, um, this would represent a massive flop for most game publishers, but it's a drop in the pond for Amazon, which is expected to generate $368.9 billion in revenue this I year. Don't, <laughs> I still believe no matter how much money you have, like that, the billion is a lot, right? But no one's going to just piss away $80 million. Like this is, this I ain't guess. that. Yeah. Okay. Also, Someone, also, someone's the, getting fired over this. Amazon's all their divisions are compartmentalized, right? So if one division loses hundreds of billions of dollars, they'd be like, all right, so Amazon gaming is done. Well, yeah. <laughs> yep, not, yep, exactly. We're not, we're not exactly, in the hundreds yeah. of billions yet, but yeah. Oh, those 300 true. people, they're done. Actually, you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, Amazon said the whole Crucible team will move to develop New World, which has already been delayed from its August release to next spring. So all, this least, is, all this is going to do is make their, their those employees have harder times finding jobs in the future. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. You were you were on the you were on the crew with Crucible that didn't make it six weeks. Yeah. We and don't want and New World. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's how that works though. Game development's tough. People are pretty used to games going up and going down pretty quickly. That's Again, true. compartmentalized. People on the art team are probably fine. People on the sound team are probably fine. Right. The business team is probably not going to be fine. Right. Maybe. Sure. But sure. <laughs> probably two hundred and eighty of those people are probably probably just spent six years. Building a honing their craft. portfolio yeah. and building a nice portfolio. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's, let's hope. Let's hope. Next um, up. Next up. Speaking of the, the, the thing that tech was referencing, I'm assuming, um, Crystal oh, yeah. Dynamics, which is having oh, yeah. some woes with Marvel's Avengers. And well, by woes, we don't mean technical. Uh, it just seems that people don't really care about playing that game anymore. Uh, has, <laughs> this is the, this is the headline. Crystal Dynamics is confident. Players will return to Marvel's Avengers. Um, okay, that's a that's a wish. <laughs> you know, if everybody, you know if what, everybody just reads that article and the headline is just like, let's just not, let's just not get back there, just because they're so confident. Let's just not do that. I I think <laughs> I think that's because they know what's coming, and comic book fans are so ravenous that uh you know just the prospect of two hawkeyes and whoever else they're bringing in black panther doctor strange like come on who's not going to play this yeah Especially apparently he bought it apparently the next social Dude, hub is in, apparently the next social hubs in wakanda oh my god come on I'm just gonna say this: If you're banking this game on Hawkeye, good fucking luck, dude. <laughs> you have you have a disdain for Hawkeye because he's a he's a peon character in the MCU, but in but he shouldn't be I, in I, comics. I love, he's been pretty popular for the last. I understand, but this game is based off the MCU. You can't tell me anything different. <laughs> These characters are direct. I mean, I even the fact that Ant, like that, a uh, Hawkeye is your next Avenger, that lets me know this is all MCU. Yeah. Except oh, yeah. for Miss Marvel, the, the, the big Kirkland. the big list of characters that are coming are mostly MCU characters too. It's like Captain Marvel, yeah. Doctor Strange, yeah, uh, it's, it's, Vision. It's, it's it's the Kirkland F MCU though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kirkland Hulk. <laughs> Kirkland Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're in trouble. They're in trouble, dude. They're in trouble. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know what? You know how I know they're in trouble? Because Marvel Spider Man didn't have this problem. And that's how I know that this game is dying fast. Would you pay for another character? In this game? Mm -hmm. No. 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 What if it was Head. Wolverine? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Instant. Yes. He didn't say what character. He said a character. You're like, nah. Dude, no. I'm not playing for Hawkeye. I'm not. <laughs> the like 50 cents? Yeah. Z Zing <laughs> brings up a good uh Zing brings up a good uh point in chat saying that. Because we haven't gotten any Marvel Marvel movies, we're in a bit of a drought. So people which, might be ready for which that means, snapback with this game. Dude, no, if, they, if that was the it, case, this this game would have been popular to begin with, and it, and it was not home runs. Yeah, you're right. And, you're right. Well, they've got time. It's a pandemic, so people's expectations are a little lower. Plus, developing from home is a little cheaper. So hopefully, they can, you know, fluff it up. For the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, put some characters in it. Be nice if they put a shitload of characters in it. Turns into a fucking Smash Brothers analogy, you know, where there's just like dozens of people to fight with. That would be cool. Um, be and cool. on the sixth of September, I think the game came out on the fifth. Uh, there were twenty eight thousand people playing 
at once. This is based on Steam. Um, on what day? What day? On the sixth the of September, launched. the day it launched. As of okay. today, there are nine hundred and ninety-two people playing. Yo, that's dead, bro. It was dead then, though, because like how much? How much was it? Twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. That's dead. On, yeah. That's on Steam alone. I mean, there's, there's probably other numbers on. That's Steam. true. Yeah. That's true. Um, that's true. But like, still pointing out that like nine hundred ninety-two. Nine hundred ninety-two is not great. That's not great. That's and I remember That's them saying that they were having issues matchmaking for like missions because there were so few people playing. Yikes. Yeah. I think more people play Anthem than that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, a, Avengers that's is going to be up. Avengers is going to be in a bargain bin at, at fucking GameStop soon. It's going to be one of those. <laughs> Best Buy. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> yeah, I mm. Uh, the next next character in Fall Guys, you guys, is Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's adorable. It's a chonky it's, boy, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it is, dude. Thick boy, thick boy. Big three thick boy, right? This uh, is fucking. This is fucking quarantine, Sonic. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Hey, hey, that's life right now, dude. I love it though. It's, it's so great. good. It's so good. You know what? <laughs> the line in the middle makes him look like one of them Russian dolls. It, sure does. it does look like a nice doll. <laughs> But apparently they've got a bunch of others coming soon. So this should is tell the they should tell the art team to re to redo it because it looks like a nesting doll. <laughs> the way Fall Guys moves on like with the community is so smart. Mm-hmm. And like I think they did one thing on where they, they tweeted out what company uh, like how much money would you spend to get in the Fall Guys? Like there was a tweet yeah. and like mad companies responded. And it like got, I think it got it went really high. And it was all going to charity too, so not to sound yeah. like bunch of assholes i just think i just think they're smart and they're strategic and they know what they're doing and even this is is in line with the 60 year anniversary of sega yeah yeah right so i think this is fuck is it 60 60? it might be like that i think it's 65 that's incredible well i mean just like nintendo sega it's 60 60 um but just like nintendo they were making stuff before video games like Nintendo's making card games before. Yeah, Nintendo's been around since like 1890. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Zing said over. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they were making mm-hmm. playing cards and shit. Nintendo's been around for a minute. Uh I mean So yeah, Fall Guys I mean, is dope. For those of you who don't like playing Fall Guys and getting locked into team games like the soccer or things like that, they also introduced a playlist that drops all of those games. Thank God. So it's not there's no team games in it. It's all last man or first to qualify. If I can just get past the first round, I'll be fucking. Happy. As long as my friends don't steal my tail, I'd probably be fine. They did steal your tail. Yeah, and that ben, was actually ben, funny. Ben stole my tail. I, ben was like, "Oh yeah," and I was like, "Bitch, that was me." <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> fuck! Like it was. Yeah. Uh, it's incredible. Um, somebody played Doom on a fridge. That's a Satan sentence. That's, I didn't think I would ever say. That's the whole story. I almost said Satan. And that's it. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Um, there's a there's a fridge that it's got an Android tablet essentially for a screen, and someone was playing Doom on their fridge with an Xbox controller because of XCloud. So yeah. that's <laughs> wild. Let me grab a drink. Just fucking open it up. <laughs> I was like low key upset because when we bought a fridge for our house, I wanted that fridge in particular because my uh, one of my best friends' parents have that fridge, um, and it is absolutely amazing. <laughs> and I just we didn't have it couldn't fit it wouldn't fit in our in our kitchen. This yeah. is one but, of those fridges that like takes pictures of what's inside your fridge, yeah. right? And then mm-hmm. sells it to insurance yeah. companies so they know that if you're eating healthy or not. I, I didn't know that, but <laughs> no, you're so, busy. You, it, it's probably true down. though. It, it's it, like I'm so happy I didn't buy that fridge. Here's the reason why I believe it's true because Vizio was listening to your TV. You, if you bought a Vizio TV, it was listening to you when it was off, like it was yeah. recording your audio and sending it to Vizio. When it was off, so I don't. Nothing surprises me anymore. And then they were selling it to Facebook, and then shit was popping up on your phone for like things you were talking about. Like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> when you log into Facebook and it's like you should eat less freezer pizza, you're like, yo, yo, bro, back the fuck up. Not only are you judging me, <laughs> but first of all, how dare you? Um, yeah, that's wild. That's wild. Completely, completely stupid and pointless, but cool flex, right? Yes, yep. that's basically the flex that Skyrim had of like you can play Skyrim on an Alexa, <laughs> right? Uh, it's just like you can play Doom anywhere. I remember when um, Apple came out with the MacBooks that had the uh, the uh, touch bar on the top mm-hmm. instead of the F yeah. keys. You could play the original Doom on that touch bar. That's that's stupid and ridiculous, but amazing. But also fucking cool, <laughs> right? yeah. But fucking cool. <laughs> I'm not and gonna like... do it, but also fuck yeah. 
And like this, this whole X Cloud thing, I started to pull, I almost pulled the trigger today, which would have been a completely pointless purchase on a tablet, a fire a Amazon Fire tablet, because they had a, a Prime Day Prime Day deal on it. Yeah, like like the eighty bucks for it, and just just to play Xbox games. But I don't know where I play that. You know, like why yeah, do nobody, I need that? Ain't nobody traveling yeah. right now. I ain't yeah. traveling shit. Yeah. I gotta pack my Xbox up tonight so I can take it with me tomorrow. What are you talking about? Just you just you have an Android phone. Just play X Cloud, homie. Yeah. That's not the same though. Yeah, this is tiny though. Yeah, but if you hold I mean, it real close it's to big, your face. But it's... No, listen. Because if he plays Apex with me, if he plays Apex now? with me, he needs a bigger screen. It's full screen. <laughs> <laughs> is Apex on Xbox? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not, not um but yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I I like the idea. I'm glad that it exists because there are people that can use it. Um, yeah. But I don't really need it. But it being an option for free is kind of dope because you never know. You never know. know. Today, today was Prime Day. Speaking of Prime Day. Flip, flip. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a bunch of Nintendo sales for those of you who have the Switch. Um, oh, Fire Emblem Three House. That. Yes, but yeah. yes. You know what, Ben? Oh yeah. I this is almost purchase. messaged you this morning when I saw this because the first thing I did today was look at Prime Day because I knew Prime Day was coming, and the first thing I do because I'm a horrible shopper, I was gonna like I was looking to see what I wanted, like mm-hmm. if I was gonna get something, mm-hmm. and I saw the the Nintendo Switch Lite on there. The first one I saw, I was like, Ah, Ben probably wouldn't like that, but the light looked like a good deal. Uh, I didn't see the light deal. Was it a you good deal? How much? Didn't see the light. <laughs> Yeah. You did not see the light. No. And I can't, it's not on this list, but I definitely saw it earlier. It's probably done. It's, it's probably is, done, yeah. It's probably a lightning deal. Yep. Uh, uh, so there's a bunch of sales. <laughs> you can get a bunch of games cheap. <laughs> it seems that Best Buy, thanks tech for laughing at that text. It looks like uh, Best Buy is uh, matching Amazon's price for Last of Us Part Two, which is interesting. Um, one year of PlayStation Plus is $30 at cdkeys.com. You should do that because normally. And what? $60. Hold on, hold on. CDKeys.com. Mm-hmm. Say less. Thirty dollars so for yeah, a PlayStation so yeah. Plus subscription? Hell yeah! So Breath of the Wild is twenty dollars off. Um, the uh, PlayStation subscription is half price. Last of Us Two is twenty dollars off, so down to forty dollars. It's a bunch of peripherals. There's a uh, four terabyte hard drive, Seagate hard drive for eighty dollars. So I'm definitely gonna get that because I've been yep. needing extra storage really? for a while. Yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah. So anyway. Um, everybody knows it's Amazon Day. Fun it's fact: a- you can use your your hard drive that you fill with your Xbox One games on your Xbox Series X. It Only for not, old games, though. It will not use the Velocity architecture, but you can move it from the extra storage yeah. you have onto this the hard drive. Side so, note: I'm just gonna buy the two hundred dollar fucking terabyte. I mean, if terabyte. it doesn't get bought by a robot first. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big, big, old, big old facts. Big old fucking facts. Which I can't wait to buy mine in two years and it'll all be in stock. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. With your no stress experience that you're going to have. <laughs> but, all, but also, hold on a second. I got to let uh, Caleb know this. I have one of those countdown calendars oh, with yeah? the minute, second days. And if I can find it quick enough, it will make sense. But I can't find it quick enough, so it won't make sense. Yo, Fat uh, here we go. guys on the stream. What's up, Fat Jolly guy? How's it going, bud? Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, all you right, got a so time, you got a countdown tech, you said 27 days, Hell yeah. 11 hours, Hell yeah. four minutes, 21 seconds, 20 seconds, 19. Se- okay, you get it. Yep, 27 <laughs> Fuck days. Yeah. Fuck yeah, nine 10, uh, 10 a.m. on the November 10th, right? Yep, um, I yep. will be in line at probably eight, and I will have my gun on me, and I'll be in line with right next to you. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Se- 750 days for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half years. Yeah, it's fucking funny. All right, last uh, article before we get to our main story. Game Pass had a big old update or uh, news brief. Anyway, um, a lot of cool games coming to Game Pass. Mucho good. It, shit. Okay, I have a I have, I have a statement I want to make about this. What's up? I am your yeah, average right. gamer. Uh huh. Right. I am one hundred percent just your bare bones dude off the street that plays video games a lot. Okay. I'm not into the in, into the the extra shit. <laughs> I'm a sports shooter type of guy these games don't excite me oh cricket 19 doesn't get you get then get you cricket excited 19 gets me horny what you talking about <laughs> wait, wait wh- which one cricket, cricket, cricket 19 <laughs> no cricket 19 dude i looked at this, these eight games bro and i said this doesn't cricket. now now you when... gotta know what a crumpet is to know what a cricket is <laughs> Turn, now, teenage mutant ninja turtles guys come on i didn't know that um <laughs> the, the movie the first movie yep wow 
Um, when Raphael think, was fighting uh, 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 Casey Jones in the park. Oh, I love that and scene. He pulls dude. out a cricket bat. <laughs> no, cricket, Casey he Jones. Goes, and he, he goes cricket. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Casey Jones is my favorite. But yeah. like I feel like the strength of Game Pass, I don't mean to hijack this this news topic, but the strength of Game Pass is when it's bringing exclusives that you would normally pay for, no questions asked. Mm -hmm. And they give it to you. Forza? Mm -hmm. Sea of Thieves? Mm -hmm. Like these like ex these Microsoft exclusives mm -hmm. that like normally you like oh shit, they just like gave me something that I would drop 60 bucks for for free. But when you have Heave Ho and other games that you may or may not have heard of that are super niche. I, I don't mean, feel like they just gave us Destiny Two and Doom Eternal. So well, again, Doom Eternal is kind of niche, and Destiny is a, has a, a very is, unique. Doom is niche. It's not. It's not. It's not like. It's not main. Like, it's one of the biggest franchises pull, pull of your, all time. Pull, your, pull yourself out of the perspective of a lifelong gamer and go to the surface level gamer. Yeah, I think Doom's still up there. It's the first person. You're just shooter. mainstream, man. First you're just mainstream, shooter. that's all. I am. <laughs> you're, you're, broad, you're broadcast <laughs> television. I think I that I think that the bigger thing with Game Pass though, tech, is that like it allows people that have curiosity to try to shit play out for game. free. And so like yeah. this is a big thing for the smaller studios to get eyes on their stuff. That being said, Scourgebringer and Katana Zero are enough for me to be excited about. Those two games are fucking great. Yeah, and Katana Zero, say, Katana Zero is, I think you would love that game because you played my cousin, Pe my friend Pedro. And this is if my friend Pedro was better. Faster. And it's cyberpunk. It's a cyberpunk ninja game that's got a dope ass soundtrack. So like, I, hear uh, you. I will so fight you could for, say for people, You could say with Game Pass, people could be bi, B-U-Y, curious. What do you think? Gross, 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 gross. I hate it. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Right, but I, maybe, maybe for someone who's like me, who's not into, I've never been into RPGs. I've never been into like certain type of story games, right? Yeah. Right? Like, like Ryan. Maybe they could do a little bit more to kind of push that a little bit instead of just like acquiescing to the already fan base who's familiar with a Katana Zero or familiar with a Scourge Bringer. I don't know if I don't know if I was arguing so much that like I want those because I'm familiar with them. I am saying that I like know those are good, so that's cool for me because I get to play them on another platform. But like, if you're a person that has Game Pass and like doesn't really know, you have a you have a pretty good chance here of downloading something you're really gonna fucking like. How though? Like I like how like what? Well, what, how many games. games have you watched on Netflix that you didn't have an inclination to watch until you hit play? Old Guard? You were like, why am I watching this? And then you were like, oh I shit, never, I, I never, fuck with this. I have no idea what Old Guard is. That's Charlie, that Charlize Theron movie. That's not uh, Old Guard? Is that the one with the... Um, the I don't know that was guard. the name of it. Yeah. I don't, think, <laughs> name, I don't think that's the name <laughs> of it. clicked on it's, something. It's the, old, it's the Old Guard. Huh? It is the Old Guard. God damn you. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you, yeah, you told me... Brain. You told me you started that movie and you were like, "Why?" It's really eh. good. And then it, it's a, really thing, good. a thing hit, and you were like, "Oh, you know what? I fuck with this." That's all this is. You hit. You Old download, guard is really you good. Download four but, or five things, and then you try one and go, "You know what? I fuck with this." So, so you here, download one hundred and sixty things, and you don't play any of them. So here, here, here's the thing. <laughs> and that's here's me. the thing. The reason why I'm talking so much right now is because I have nothing to offer to drifting. But here's the thing. <laughs> me and Aaron go out to eat, right? Uh -huh. And sometimes we venture to new restaurants, but we get into a when we do drift out, go out. We sometimes, yeah. oh, there it is. Oftentimes, we get burnt <laughs> by what our new choices, right? Like we go somewhere. We went to this one place that was it was supposed to be nice. It was expensive. It was absolute garbage. <laughs> and I feel that most people who play games, they'll download something like they they never heard of, like a heave ho. But I'm looking at you, heave ho, and they play it, and it's not fucking fun. It's not even good. So what? You didn't spend anything. It costs, that, it costs but, nothing. But, it costs but that experience time. of venturing out gets tainted. Nah, not for me. I uh, I mean, not for me. I'm not going to say you're wrong. But for, I, me and uh, Moncho f fired up this game that, what was it called? Dungeon of the Endless. And I lasted maybe 60 seconds. <laughs> he lasted 30 seconds. He went, no, nah, it's not for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling it. And then in like another half, couple minutes, I'm like, nah, man, I can't do this. <laughs> we just shut it. It's moving on. Now, you know, you know my stance with what I say on Twitter and stuff. I like, I hate bashing uh, games out there as as our, we have voices, right? People are listening to us. I hate saying don't buy this game, don't pick up this game. Anyway, wasn't for me. And it was free. No, no love lost. I'm absolutely gonna play Heath Hoax. It looks hilarious and ridiculous. 
Yeah, but see, what you do? You, you clicked it. You clicked it, and you looked at the trailer, right? Or you already have yeah. familiar with the trailer? Yeah. Oh, uh, Heave, I mean, Heave Ho's not new. I don't think. None of these games are new, right? Uh, no. Uh, I don't think any of them are. No. No. Um, but Heave Ho looks fun if you liked Katamari Damacy, which is like an old school PlayStation game. It's kind of goofy. That being said, Tech, you uh, saw what? That being said, Tech, you saw Fall Guys and went, "That looks stupid," and you like it. True. And so you're like, very wrong. But so also, like, I said that looks stupid. I'll give it a try. But Heave Ho looks like I'm not giving it. Cricket Nineteen, my dude. Cricket Nineteen. There are people in England that are fucking jacked that Cricket Nineteen. Why? Gonna why be is that? Pack. Why is that not location based though? Where are we at? I mean, nobody in the nobody in the United States watches cricket religiously. That's not true. That's not true. You're just, you're, just not, you're just not rich enough to watch cricket. That's all. No, 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 no. Because if I knew someone, if I no cricket, cricket, you getting yeah, shoved in, guys, if, how, at my high school. You getting shoved in the lockers. How many British expats <laughs> do you guys know? Huh? How many Jamaicans? None. But I do know. Many, I do know some British people. I do know some. Some Indian sure. people. Yeah. 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 Sure. And I, I but understand that you know like that's not. That game is not for this climate. Out, out of all the people I've met in my life, I've never had one guy be like, "Man, you you see that cricket game the other day?" Hey, yo, Man, they hey, were really in, were in Springfield, Illinois. Out. In Springfield, no, I, Illinois. That's I, weird. I, I, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's Springfield slander. Caleb, you shouldn't Jesus. laugh. You shouldn't laugh. You're from there. No, I'm not. Kind of. No, I'm Kinda. not. No, I went to high school there. <laughs> that's okay. it. All right. I'm not um, in there, which is the best part about Springfield. <laughs> you guys are lifelong Yay! gamers. No, oh, that's so sweet. You guys are lifelong gamers, Ooh. and no one said, "Hey, Caleb, have you played Cricket 18? Have you no, played Cricket but, 18? But you, you're 17? conflating something not being for you and like the service not putting out things that are for you. No, see, that's, Netflix that's the case. puts out movies and shows indicative yeah. of the area, which is why people are all about VPNs right now, so they can listen, they can watch anime from japan Cricket. sure but do Cricket you watch everything do you watch everything, do you watch everything that netflix puts out because they put out anime that's here do you watch it i don't watch anime okay so you don't watch cricket so fuck it this game's not for you i let's hear talk, that let's I talk about that. racing <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about racism what no nope, <laughs> wrong podcast all right i'm sorry I'm, and now i have nothing to offer for drifting i'm done <laughs> We're I talking about racing games overall. We're talking I bet about you would do. Overall. We're talking about racing games overall. Tech, what is the first racing game you remember playing ever? Driver, oh, wait, you are the wheelman. Driver, we're getting into this wait. Into this topic right now? Hold on, wait. Yeah. Driver, you are the wheelman? Like, that's driver, the subtitle you the are the wheelman. Yep. Driver had a subtitle on that. Oh, I'm thinking it. of Wheelman, which had Vin Diesel on the cover. <laughs> Well, Vin Diesel wasn't even popular when this game no. came I out. Think we've, I think we've talked about Driver before, Tech. I don't know. Driver is the episode. fucking amazing, bro. Like, yep. I played the shit out of that game. Yep. The physics were amazing. It had that replay camera that you could like, direct your own movies with. The first, like, the first, like, even before you can even play the game, you had to do a slalom, which I didn't even know what it was at the time. Like, so, like oh, I didn't know what slalom. A slalom. <laughs> slalom. I, 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 the second time before you said it, I fixed it. A slalom. I didn't even know what it was before. So, like, that game was amazing. Dude. That uh, it wasn't just a slalom; it was uh, like an eight-point checklist in the garage. Yes, the garage, the garage to, tutorial was hard, and you had to do like a reverse one eighty and shit. It was really difficult with a yo, joystick with no analog. It was just yeah. like, <laughs> like yo, D pad and buttons. If you want to get, if you want to play the game, you're gonna have to learn how to play a game, bro. Like. <laughs> We're getting into this shit. <laughs> oh my god! I, I, her, bud. Gonna, oh, Caleb, yeah. shit. <laughs> I can't hear anything I'm anybody's saying. But yes, I got my I'm locking off. I can't <laughs> do this. Why I got these hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's in the garage, and I'm not so gonna best. go get it. Hey, Ryan, uh, hi, I just ordered a pair of headphones with a 3.5 millimeter jack and the microphone, so I could do the the Apex Legends crossplay with Sony. Oh, funny. It's the only way. Oh, uh, what is uh, there's some multiplayer thing coming to PlayStation? Shoot, I should probably kept this to myself because I can't think of the name. Oh, uh, the Samurai, uh, Ghost of Tsushima's Ghost of Tsushima's getting multiplayer. co op. Okay. Yeah, I saw that today. I'm it's getting co op, it's getting four player co op survival, two player co op missions, and it's gonna have a raid. Who has yeah. a PS4 that I can like share games with? Anyone? I don't, don't game share with anybody. Nice, but Caleb, look, look at me. It's a PS4. <laughs> We got this. It's we like got a, this. It's, it's like a PS3, but stronger. Uh, I got a, I got a bunch of games on that shit too. Let's link, bro. Say, let's hey. say less. Say less. 
Say less. A shoe source. Uh, so uh, yeah, Caleb. Was... Oh, so driver, wheelman, love it. Caleb, Yo, yeah, oldest racing game you can remember. Driver's the fucking shit. Oh shit! No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. F Zero. Super Nintendo. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Nice. Sure. Um, earliest racing game I can probably remember is going to be Mario Kart. Um, mm-hmm. There's not really any way around that as much as I wish that there was. Um, that's not the game that I think of when I think of racing games. Wait, 64 or Super Nintendo? Probably 64. But that I can remember, 64. Um, mm-hmm. I remember playing F-Zero, but like that's not... I don't remember that that as like, oh shit, racing games. Um, but yeah, Mario 64. Mario Kart 64, I'm sorry. Yeah, that space race looks uh, riveting, huh? That's, that's cool. <laughs> We're sending it. Full send right there. Looking full send in it. <laughs> Could you he imagine rage quitting when you play this game? Like, <laughs> <laughs> slamming your, your Atari joystick down. It's couch co-op, so rage quitting's a real personal thing back then. Yeah. Couch co-op. You smack Reaching over and turning that shit off. You spike your uh <laughs> you spike your Pepsi free and this uh, is the <laughs> this is a pure side note. Pure side note. Have you ever got into a fight because of a video game? Yeah. A fist fight? <laughs> like a fist so fight. I said, yeah. <laughs> I have one hundred percent. Yeah. I have not gotten could, into a fight ever. Oh, I can Jesus, tell you what game. Look at this. My brother my brother Blech. was beating my That's brother like was beating my ass on Super Smash Brothers. I reached over, turned that shit off, and ran so fast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he, you caught up it? <laughs> he caught me, man. That was that was the worst. That looks <laughs> like you're guiding a matchbox out of someone's intestinal tract. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Look at> no, <that. laughs> no, no. You you have like a magnet on the outside of their body trying to drag it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Seems like, like he's not wrong. <laughs> oh, Night Driver, man! If you want to see something cool, look up the box art for Night Driver. It's fucking gorgeous. Looks nothing like this. <laughs> yeah. I like I like where this this topic is going right now. Like the history. Uh, this is really. I love this. Shit. I've, I've actually watched this video before because uh, mystery to nobody. Really I'm good actually, for the listeners. De- a good point. Uh, we're uh, developing. Uh, well, it's up to us, isn't it, to make it interesting? I'm developing a racing game, so I actually watched this video for ideas. So going back to the classics. Hopefully is... you watch the end of the video for ideas. <laughs> yeah, it's this first one. Um, well, I mean, later, one of the topics. No. Mm. Kids are like, yo, racing games is trash. That force is trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? yeah. like, oh, bitch, she's no, trash. No, the fuck is not. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I always. I Curb always... your expectations, son. <laughs> I mean, dude, we have perspective. We we're do. granted perspective. We do, yeah. Uh, we've got we've we got go. the ability to go, yo, remember what it was like? And then all Dude, these this is, young kids this are It's actually like, a yeah. video capture from a VHS. Look at the tracking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Great. It's incredible. Um, um Ben, what's your first yeah. racing game? Uh we're get we're almost there. <laughs> um in a few more years we're gonna hit pole position on the Atari. <laughs> and uh, I remember thinking back then that it was stupid. I was not entertained. But shortly thereafter, um there was one on the Nintendo called Rad Racer, and I wanted to pull up. Jesus, look at that! There's, a, I wanted to pull up the that soundtrack because <laughs> Rad Racer not only was in 3D, it came with 3D glasses, the the red and blue film ones, but it had three songs that you could push select and change the song while you're racing. And I I know them so well I could actually hum them to you. Going to, but it was very simple. <laughs> uh, just a point A to point that. B racer. It wasn't like a circuit. It was sort of like Outrun, where you're just on a highway. And you go that way until you what run. What the out fuck of is the point of this game? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like Pac-Man. I think. Okay, this game here. This is. Uh, where's the title? Come on. Head by Nam- Rally X by Namco was the um, first I'm, video I'm game to have music. So first that's video pretty game cool. Music. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You oh. know. What's, you know what's crazy is like these these seventy like the like games were born in, in like in the seventies mm-hmm. and like we were born in the eighties. Uh, for the most part, you guys probably what nineties. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So for me and Ben, we are the first generation of pure gamers, and like okay. that means we're like we're, like we're gonna be that that generation where we're eighty year old playing video games, right? Yep, sure. and that's crazy. Yeah, we will you be know? the oldest people playing video games. Yeah, we're gonna be the oldest. Pe- yeah, for sure, dude. Like, because I'm never in my no, lifetime. No, 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 that doesn't work because people older than us. No, because people older than us were playing video games when they came. They were made for us. Like our parents were buying in the late seventies. Yeah. Our parents were buying it for us. Right. Yo, like our parents. Though, right? I'm saying, like I'm saying, like the games came out in the seventies. 
So someone's parents bought their kid a game that came out in 1976. Yo, I was born in 1981, bro. So like, yeah, a nigga still, born in you're, 78. You're a member of that generation. For sure. We're we're still the same generation. We're still we're still in the same like Wait, age group. No, y'all are in the same generation as us. Y'all millennials. Get the fuck out of here. I know I'm a millennial. I thought, yeah, for, for sure. But like, we're going to be the first generation who've been playing video games since we can remember. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, the average age of the, of a gamer is what 34, 35 right now. Yeah. 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 Oh, this this is a good one here. So we're we're in like unprecedented frame rate. Yeah, we are. Um, it's that TX. Uh, TX1, I think this is also by Namco. I hate that I'm so behind. Just hit F5, think... bro. Refresh that shit. Oh, but... no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm looking at my TV app. Uh, we also don't Twitch. have to comment on each one. <laughs> no, I comment no, on this one amazing. because this is silky smooth. It's a 20, 20 minute long video. This some is bringing these... me joy. I don't give a yeah, fuck. Some of these, uh, some of these old sprite based games had like 120 frames per second. It's crazy. What? Uh, stop, your, stop your lies. I don't believe that. Stop no. your lies. Get that yeah. filth out of your mouth. I think Doom. Doom. Oh, he's had TVs going up to two two sixty or some shit resolution. What is this buggy challenge game about? What is he? What is he? What's the end goal here? He has to the drive towards something? the North Star to get to the birth of Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, what? I'm fucking with you. <laughs> what? what? He was so confused. Bape, like, bape, Jesus. <laughs> I'm here, Lord, motherfucker. <laughs> I brought some frankincense and. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually have Frankie System Mirror uh, uh, fucking incense. What's up? I have nothing. Uh, what is this game? Yeah. City, Connection? City Connection? Oh my god. It's fucking strange. Ryan, what's your oldest racing game memory? Pole position. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a my lot. That's, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one for a lot of people. Uh, what about every, what's everybody's like first like oh my god favorite for me I think it was probably Rad Racer F Zero's up there too but I think I said I think I said Driver because that yeah. was my first favorite it's right. either Yo, Driver yeah. or Twisted Metal which is not really racing but it was car based yeah sure. sure I shared a story with somebody this week about how um I was in enrichment which is like summer school for smart kids I guess um when I was in like third and fourth grade. <laughs> And one year we had, we were tasked with like finding a property and like furnishing it and then like adding the prices up and then sharing it with the class. It was really stupid, but I got done with it. I got done with it really, really quickly. And I was sitting in this computer lab in like 97, like not sure what to do. And so what I did is I looked up a game guide for driver and then hit print. (laughs) Didn't realize it was like. 63 pages so oh I'm my god dot, dot lab. matrix two so it's bam, 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 yeah so i'm in this bam. computer lab and the printer just starts beatboxing in the corner and like <laughs> the teacher's grabbing it and looking around like who who did oh i don't have ads <laughs> the teacher's looking around like who did this and then like realized it was me because i was a big fucking nerd <laughs> and walked over to me and i had to go to the principal's office and like explain myself and i was like i was done and they still sent me home with it and I remember taking it home and finding all of the secret cars in like Havana. It was probably Driver too. So like Havana and mm. uh, the what what map what uh, cities were in that San Francisco. I don't remember too uh, very well. Havana, Chicago. You could drive through Wrigley Field. I remember that. And then there was a Mustang muscle car in the in the like parking garage. You could go find. That was the driver you could get out of the car and run around. Yeah, yeah. I so love that was, that driver. Was a, that driver was a three D Grand Theft Auto before Grand. Theft. Auto was oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Because remember, do you guys remember Grand Theft Auto before it was yeah, Grand Theft Auto? It was weird. And it was top down. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was weird. I remember playing that for eight hours straight. I never at, played top at down a, at a friend's house. We just couldn't stop. Just couldn't. We took turns. We had to go to the bathroom or eat pizza, and so we'd swap. High five, <laughs> Yo, <life laughs> high five and change chairs. You simpler, know? simpler back then, dude. Life was, <laughs> life was, uh, this is uh, a game with just a straight up picture of the inside of a car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, this shit is actual garbage, but I bet you that shit was late. 1989, dude. That shit's lit. Someone was like, yo, it looks like my Taurus. <laughs> could, like, 89, 89. We weren't playing this because we couldn't afford it, dude. Like, you couldn't dude, afford it. He has it. a screen in his car. Damn. Wow. Yeah, in 1990. Yeah, was, Next level. Yeah. When, video, yo, when video games went polygon, we lost our minds, guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. Oh, God, like, you, you, don't, you don't understand console <laughs> progression like Atari to. NES and then any uh, like one. the jumps. This, this is that really looks like nice Lego racing. From- yeah, but look at it compared to the last one. Yeah. Also, yeah. okay, so the reason a lot of people didn't believe in VR and it was such a joke for decades is because when VR came out, it looked like this. Yeah, so and you were like, was, this don't look like the real world. <laughs> it's it, it was true 3D. It still had one monitor per eyeball, so it got the the stereo vision. 
but it looked like this flat polygons yeah sure there's a few there's a few movies where they uh based their movie on vr and it looked like this this is a sega game virtual racing yeah this game was fucking yeah. hype i loved remember, loved, loved, remember loved, show, loved this game remember the show reboot yeah hell yeah <laughs> and everyone was like that's what's going on inside computers <laughs> Look how smooth the, the arm movement is on the steering that's pretty good deck yeah this, well this is this was game is phenomenal so, yeah. Are you guys looking at virtual racing still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I pulled up the screen and refreshed it, and it was like the exact same as my TV. So I think it's like basically where I'm at. I'm just Strange. getting it delayed, no matter yeah, sure. what. All right. Uh, All right. So that's. Uh, I mean, we can keep watching this, but. Uh, I'd like or, or do you guys want to watch it to the end? Nah. Yeah, let's watch it to the end, dude. This okay, is giving me it. much joy. All now, right, I so to if evolution. you're listening to us, then if you're listening to this, if you're a podcast listener, just go to Twitch and uh, watch this part of the. Uh, of the video because we're yeah, watching and if you, really don't have, cool if you don't have time to do that or you, you want to like listen to the podcast through the podcast app or whatever i will uh add the link to this video and time stamp it so when we hit start yeah. you'll be able to hit start with us so you know what we're yeah. looking at um or you can just fast forward till we're talking about the next three things but uh how many more minutes do we have left on this kale probably like 10. 10 yeah yeah um see here's the thing i we talked when we kicked this off we were talking about how much we liked racing games and i have to be honest with y'all I kind of don't like mm-hmm. racing games are not my jam. I don't mm-hmm. go out of my way to play them very often. I got into Forza for a while because we all kind of did um, mostly because I found out that I could drift like Sarge Oof. did. If I, if I, you know, grabbed, uh, changed some of the controls uh, and some of the anti-lock and stuff graphic. like that. Holy this game um, was revolutionary. Yeah. Oh, that's the next level. That's a jump. That's a jump. Yep. Sega, I played this game. Yeah. See, Sega, is this Sega CD? Probably. Or Saturn. Saturn, Def- Saturn. Yeah. I had a Saturn. This, I played this game on a Saturn. Yeah, look at that. It's fucking gorgeous. This definitely looks like it was in an arcade. It is. Also, it is for sure. For sure. The Italian job looking shit. <laughs> anyway, um, continue. Sorry. Yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. If y'all just no. Um... <laughs> no, you say you're not a big fan of racing games in actuality. No, in yeah, life. I'm really not. I'm really not. Um, because and I've, we ran into this while we were playing Forza Horizon Four. Is that like a lot of the time it's just too much of a uh, of an instance of like oh I made one mistake and now I'm in the back of the race for the rest yeah. of the game which is why yeah. I did get into games like Wipeout because you had like weapons and pickups and boosts and things that like leveled the playing field a little bit which yeah. is why I think Mario Kart's kind of a quintessential racing game because you can just you yeah, know pick up the fucking blue shell and knock out the person in first place but first uh, yeah. by and large racing games don't um, don't Oof, hold my attention man. for very long. Yeah, neither, neither do I. It, I like the the game, the racing games that actually have extra aspects to it that makes it a little bit more video gamey. Uh, like racing sim, like also in real life though, I'm not into NASCAR. I don't care about r- cars on a, on a track for the most part. But if I'm interactive with it and I'm playing a game and I like, I do like the arcadey racing games. Mm-hmm. But also, there's a huge place in my heart. For the simulation arcade, uh, simulation racing games. Sure, like yeah. your, like your Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo was fucking groundbreaking, man. Yep, yeah. I remember playing that with my brother. We actually tried one of those long endurance races where we would take turns, like every time we would pit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was crazy. So, uh, is it there? Is there a uh, a more impetus for y'all to play racing games if it's um? Oh, I fucking remember. This. If it's uh single player, like if you play it, because uh, Zing in the chat said he's a fan of car games, but multiplayer versus isn't his jam. And that's kind of where like, I am. Though. If I'm playing against people like, in racing, I'm not having as much fun as if I'm just like mulling around. Yeah, I'm mulling around. Fucking yeah, exactly, exactly. It, I, I like I my sandboxes. It. It's so funny because I actually forgot this was the topic tonight, and so like just to know where my mind's at, like this tonight, I I downloaded Need for Speed on PlayStation Plus because it's free. Yeah, I love Need for Speed. Like I love I love those games. Hot yeah. pursuit, all this is insane to me. Mm-hmm. Cause like we all we all drive, we all love to drive. Uh we all love cars, uh some more than others. Yeah. So this Fast does this, this is popular for a reason, right? <laughs> exactly, dude. So yeah. it's gonna resonate in our hearts for for one reason or another, no matter sure. what. Sure. And Need for Speed actually in their game is more recently has been going for more of that Fast and Furious for sure vibe, especially mm-hmm. with their single player where you're like earning street cred and like Project the last Gotham. The last Need for Speed, no, not the last Need for Speed, the second to last one, Need for Speed Payback, was like a story where you were actually like boosting cars from semi trucks on the highway and shit. Yeah. It was very yeah. um, mm-hmm. fast and furious. <clears throat> yeah, so I like, think Project, I think Project Gotham was the start of the start of something special. This is definitely I, I, this I, a huge I'm gonna, leap. I'm gonna say the midnight. Well, this this was a huge leap for lighting. 
Because yeah. the first thing I noticed from Midnight Club, which Midnight Club, not that version, but the ones that came after oh. it, revolutionized shit. But this uh, is the first one that we used. Too, with this, so good. this shit right here. Uh, yeah, Zing in the chat says, uh, I think that was an Xbox launch title. Yeah, PGR the, uh, was. Project Gotham. Yeah. PGR was, yeah. Yeah, Burnout games are awesome. If you, guys had the list, crash mode, if you guys had the list, like your top three, like racing games that you would go and play right now, what what uh, what would you what would you land on? You know, Midnight Club Dub Edition. Yeah. That's one for sure. Yep. That's one for sure. Um, Need for Speed Underground Two. Here's here's Underground One on the screen right now. No, he's saying that yeah. would be his number two. I think. Yeah. Grand no, Turismo. No, 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 no. Need for Speed Underground Two would be oh, my go-to. Gotcha, right. gotcha. Uh, there's a Need for Speed. I'm not sure if the the subtitle, but it's is the first time they introduced cops. Hot Pursuit. Most Wanted. I want to say Hot Pursuit. Most uh, Wanted. Most Wanted. Most Wanted, was, most wanted was much more for, recent than. Uh, no, Most Wanted got remade. More yeah, Most Wanted was back in uh, 2007. Burnout Takedown was Lucian. Number one, number one off top for me is Midnight Club Dub Edition. Like that, like the fact that like like it's specifically Dub Edition, it was actually insane. Sure. Um, sure. I. Oh, I want to say Wipeout uh, XL. Two thousand five was uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, the original. That's the that's the one, man. Yeah. I I, I honestly played that game for hours and hours and hours with friends, Oops, and like man. we just. It was not and just running from the cops was a thing. You could free roam, drove around. You yeah. could run from the cops, get rid, get rid of them, and then go back and get them again. You know, yeah. Um, that was that was like the first real into customization as well. Yeah, the customization like, on that made it so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And yeah. honestly, all I need right now is a racing game that looks good, plays good, feels good, and you can do you can fully customize with your own uploaded graphics. Yo, when uh, EA Access gets added to um, Xbox Game Pass, grab the most recent Need for Speed Heat. I'm pretty sure it I'll lets pl- you do that. I'll play that. I'll play that with you guys. That game looked fun. Yeah, Heat looks dope. Yeah. Yeah, I, didn't want, I, I didn't want to spend the money it. on it. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah um, for me, I've got Wipeout up there for sure. I'm not sure which one. I said XL because that was like pivotal. Oh, mine's Wipeout 3. And uh, it was real gritty. Yeah, 3 was great. 3 was my yeah. oh shit moment for, for mm-hmm. Wipeout. Um. And then uh, Crash Team Racing, nice. for sure. That game is legitness. Um, and yeah, then... that's on my list. Ooh, footage on this one's legitimate. Uh, Sheppy. Weird. Forza Motorsports Two was super good. It wasn't that. Looks like it, but it was super good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. That yeah, was that was the that was the first one that I really got into. And back then they had like an auction house, so you could like make tunes and paint cars and shit like that Yo. and sell them sell them in your auction house to make money it was it was pretty awesome the yeah. stutter on this video is so real right now yeah i don't know what that was <laughs> it was fucking wild and, and like the, the here's, here's how we're spoiled right and like people are like oh it's like not like the like first of all that's insane but like on that last video you like they weren't move buildings moving it was just blocks moving or like at mm-hmm. a time yeah. it wasn't actually the buildings and now we get shit like oh that building is actually being reflected right yeah perfect. sure yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting when you get past like 2010 and games are like oh oh they figured something out and like reflections look good i remember the first time so ben and i were playing shit what is this uh, Need for Speed Need for Shift. Speed shift. Wow. the shift That's was pretty. great shift uh, shift one and two yeah, were good it was very good i remember ben and i were playing a game and i don't remember which one it was but uh it was one of those moments where we were like, oh shit, this has reached a level. We were driving through a tunnel and it washed out dark and you couldn't see for a second until your eyes adjusted. And then when you came out, it flushed the screen in white and you're like, oh fuck. And then you could see again and it was like, yeah, this is this does something. Um, for those of y'all who didn't play Split Second, that was yeah. a racing game where you could impact the world based on the points you'd earned, where you could like change the race course by making like planes fall and like crash and change the course it was fucking cool i think yeah, i, I played, played this game those. i think yeah. i played this game split second i'm 100 since i played this game Ooh. it had a it had a really good demo for um for <laughs> crane swinging around it had a really good demo on 360 <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a need for speed shit yeah i, I guarantee um, i played this game uh dirt here it is Sarge is so horny for Dirt 5 next month. It's unbelievable. (laughs) I've been playing rally games since the start, uh, and they've been on this video. The Colin McRae games. I played those since day one. And uh, the way those games... Yeah, the one on PlayStation 1. Yeah, the way they did... uh, 
the, your navigator was talking to you and all the sounds of the gravel and hitting underneath your car, like the, just the fidelity of it was really cool. Yeah, did y'all ever play Excite A lot of detail. Fuck yeah. Excite, Excite Bike on 64 yeah. when you could cut That's... people off and knock them off their mm-hmm. motorcycles? Shit yep. Was dope. And you you had to manage uh, like uh, overheating on temperature Heat. and shit like that too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had a gas button and, a, and then a boost button. Yep. And then you could, the and then they made um the uh that was the first time you could create maps. You yeah, also true. create yeah yep you, we would, you we could would make do, maps and yep that shit was dope. Yep, that was that was a lot of fun. You could, and then you could like test them out that halfway through. It's not like you had to finish one and go like you could drop yeah. it and test it. At least another Need for Speed. Oh no, Grid. Does, uh, Grid was really good too. Does Spy Hunter count as a uh, racing game? No one's mentioned that yet. Hmm. Not really, because you're not racing. It's combat, you know. Yeah. It's it's the same format as a lot of other games. Racing is combat. If you're not rubbing, it's not racing. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that's that needs context. That's a uh, That's a quote from uh, uh, Thunder, uh, Days of yep. Thunder. Yep. Not Tropic Thunder. They still uh, make a video game that's ultra realistic, and like if you like crash, you have to go to court. And like, <laughs> like you get you get a fucking summons and you get like arrested. Your, your insurance goes up, fucking. <laughs> hey, I think goes up. You I think Drive out. Club is a uh, like a like a social, socially sourced like crowd. You know what I'm saying? Like it's uh it's a social, socially contributed. I think it's still going because I saw a motorcycle montage video, and it looked fucking insane. They're doing like Isle of Man stuff, going 200 miles an hour, and yeah. they said it was all. Uh, look at this. this club, whatever is out that last game. What was that called? Club. Drive Club. Drop. I don't and think there's like, motorcycles there's in Drive Club. I think there are though. Like it's all like I'm, I'm saying, it's all community built. I think. You yeah, know you're flexing. Insane. You know you're flexing when you got an Nvidia as your as your sponsor in the actual yeah, game. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know, you know your graphics look good. It's For amazing. It's amazing how much games changed in forty years. I mean, oh, it's not sure, because it's 40 years and you would expect large jumps, but like watching what Forza Horizon looks like, not even now, f- four years ago, is like, yeah. damn, damn. Mm-hmm. Remember I when was... shit looked like like you were moving a matchbox through an intestinal tract? <laughs> when, I, I was teaching, when I was teaching middle school last year, one of the students, uh, it was right when the NBA 2K19 or 20 came out, and uh, the student, oh. one of the students is like, oh, this game is oh. trash. And I... <laughs> I pulled up a YouTube uh, compilation of all the NBA games <laughs> since like 1990, and I was like, "You guys want to see what trash is?" And I put it on. <laughs> by, the end of it, by the end of it, they're like, "Yeah, man, you're right, man. This actually it's just, like, this does look yeah, pretty look, good now." Look God. at the effects, the fucking That's water just covering the screen, like insane. Exactly how you would see it in real life. That's it's frustrating. Insane. Yeah, frustrating. Frustrating. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm it's very stressful. Yo, the, very F1, stressful. the F1 games. There's a. There's a. A racing game that that uh, like actual F one drivers were playing at the beginning of this quarantine yeah. to like be a competition for. Uh, oh yeah, it became like a I racing, ranking. Wasn't it? Yeah, i racing, i racing. Which I sounds racing. like a which sounds like a really weird fucking <laughs> I, Apple I product. Port. Like Apple made it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's I remember seeing that and being like, that's not real though. Uh, but no, turned to die racism. But oh well. All right, so. With, with, we must move on. That was a fun little segment. Yeah, but yeah. we we actually, uh, uh, me and Ryan created this uh, idea of a racing episode because three games came out in the last few weeks, uh, and they all had something to do with drift in a way. So this was gonna be a drift a drift episode, but whatever. Um, so episode. pretty close back to back, we got Hot Shot Racing, Inertial Drift, and The Art of Rally. Oh yes, yeah, um, so you say this. I uh, I uh, I actually have these things queued up so if people want to watch yeah. the trailer for hot shot racing that's on the screen right are any of these now. free uh hot, uh, hot shots shot on is game free. pass on game yeah. pass yeah. Right. and the other the other two are 20 dollars a piece yeah that's not happening for me because i don't care that so much. i bought those so i i've played all oh, let me say, if you bought it i have yeah, it there, right? oh PC? yeah yeah uh no you just inertial got inertial drift, drift right? you just got inertial drift because i bought it on xbox okay it's fun yeah the, the other one was not on xbox yeah, our no, rally's on the Epic Game Store. Yeah, so you R- got two hours. Really yeah. So anyway, uh, who here has played this? Who here has played Hot Shot? I'm not that uh, I played a couple, couple rounds. That was about it. You see, so didn't finish the tournament or nothing. No. Okay. 
So uh, I did. There's not you just finish and you get some unlocks and you get a lot of currency and you can upgrade your cars and stuff like that. It is a, a neat homage to classic games, especially virtual racing. Is was basically exactly what it looks like. If you guys remember that video we just watched. Yep. Yo, there was not a Ridge Racer in that montage. That's yes, there was. Yeah, there was. You, was there? there? Here's, okay. a, here's a th- yeah. I think they missed. Uh, there was only one F1 game that I saw. Yeah, they and I, I know there's tons of them. <laughs> yeah. Like there had to be tons of F1 games. I think they missed a little bunch of games. Yeah, well, the, when did the when did it come out? Point. When did the video the come out? I, they're probably just like talking about leaps of technology, honestly. Like that, legit so that, that video came out in 2018. So 17 probably was the last version before that video came out. That's sure, probably sure. why there was a bunch. Of sure, it, but for people who haven't seen um, inertial or uh, not sorry, not inertial drift, um, hot shot racing, Ben, what's the What's the, you know, because we were going to be listening to this that aren't watching. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll give you the I'll give you the breakdown, but you have to get the chat off our stream. Oh, that movie. is what you meant. Sorry. Oh wow, good shit, good shit. <laughs> I didn't do that. Um, all right, so Hot Shot is a is an homage to the '90s racing games. Everything's super polygonal, no textures. Uh, but because it's a modern racer, there's a lot going on. So lo- lots of movement, 120 frames or something like that. It's crazy. Um, a lot of lot of like birds in the sky, dolphins jumping over the track, Ferris wheels rotating. So it looks like an old '90s game, but there's a lot. Uh, you can drift and uh, and you can draft, and that's really the whole game. Really, I don't know if there's any like what they call rubber band physics, where uh, it pulls you to the front faster and the then swing shot. Yeah, and then people behind you c- catch up faster unnaturally. Fast. Yeah, if you're in first like, place, like you're Mario Kart. Than if you're in last place, yeah, like Mario Kart. You ever notice in Mario Kart, you can go from first to eighth in the last 200 feet? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's it's cool. It's very simple. It is a great homage. Uh, and I want to touch this before we log off for the day. I want to discuss how games can be still so simple and keep us motivated or to keep playing. For, yeah. me, this was, for me, this wasn't it. So as we get to the end of our list, we'll maybe figure out why. But I finished a tournament, and then uh, I think I played one in the F1 car just to see what it was like. And I was just like, okay, that's cool. I'm it. sorry, I, I lost it. What game are we talking about? This is Hot Shot. Hot Shot. Hot yeah. Shot. Okay. So it's it's beautiful. It is a great homage. Uh, it look, it reminds me of like the old some... Daytona games, based on its yeah. like pol- that's polygonal structure. It's like yeah. very Daytona plain. had Daytona had textures, but like if you remember that video we just watched, the virtual racing one had no polygon. The one made by Sega. Yeah, that yeah. that's that is really what it was going. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, um, next game on our list is Inertial Drift, which is a game that I think Ben and Sarge also played. Um, yeah. It's a twin stick racer, which I'll let you figure out what the fuck that means while the trailer's playing and they're talking about it. Yeah, it's... Uh, how much of that one did you play, Ryan? I I played probably 10 or 15 races. Nice. Okay, so you, you got to the mountain map? Or the, uh, uh, the really narrow, like, no. downhill race? I didn't get to that one. No. Oh, shucks. All right. So you you do two you do uh two city maps and then you then you do like a straight up uh initial D like <laughs> like Tokyo Drift mountain pass, right. which you'll probably see in the trailer, and it's very narrow. Um. Huh. So anyway, yeah. So your left stick steers, but it doesn't steer very much. So you have to drift to make it around a corner, and then it's a marriage of both sticks and both triggers and each, each car behaves differently. Some cars drift more if you hit the brake, some cars drift more if you hit the gas. Uh so you're really doing it's just those four buttons. No other button does anything. Yep. So both sticks and both triggers and you're it's fully analog obviously. So you're you're constantly pushing all four of those things at different degrees. It's very neat and it's so responsive. So as you're going around the corner like just the slightest brake tap and your butt swings out or it's it's really interesting. Um Ryan, so, what you, so, what your initial so, to, so I mean, I, I enjoy it a lot. And if it's something that somebody's wanted to play a drifting game, this would be something to do. It's not going to be real drifting, though. It's not. No, of course. Like not. the the way that it's set up is is nothing like it because you can just mash the gas, turn, hit the drift button, you'll drift through the whole turn. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you know you can let off that kind of thing, but like drifting, you're you're playing with, uh, <clears throat> you know, your throttle control and and braking at the right time, you know, throwing the e brake, that kind of thing. But if it's something that you know you've always wanted to drift and you just never been good at at one of the other like realistic drifting games, this is something that's fun that you can use to like pass the time on. Like I, I enjoy it a lot. I mm-hmm. mean, and it's it's more of 
it's called initial drift but it's more of just a racing game it's not truly based on that because on some of the maps i was just able to run them real fast well yeah yeah, i was able to run it fast like some of them zig like it was a like a bunch of s curves but if you Mm -hmm. hit the line perfectly you could just drive straight through all of them yeah um so and it was based on like time trials you know that kind of thing so um yeah Yeah, it's great our, our direction is really really good um, I think all of them are in their own way, and they're all actually all three of these games are completely different, but fantastic looking. I, yeah. I I I think the uh, I think this game for you hardcores out there that visually is uh, like Ridge Racer uh, was married to Initial D, which is an old anime uh, about drifting, but this definitely took inspiration from that. But it's like an American version of Initial D. It's got very Americanized characters and style. But um, even the intro is hand. I think it looks it looks hand drawn, even if it's not. It's hand drawn. Yeah. It has to yeah. be, dude. I saw yeah. like imperfect imperfect lines. Yeah. So yeah. like it felt very hand drawn. Yeah. So it's definitely got this uh, Initial D inspiration with an American twist, but it looks and plays like Ridge Racer. Very cool. Very very cool. Great music. Like I was I was writing today's uh, episode notes with that paused in the background for like 10 15 minutes i'm actually listening to it right now like i'm actually playing it right now yeah and this the music is so chill which also feels like ridge racer so uh if you like ridge racer and you want to have an initial d game but you don't want to like have a clutch button and like feather the the real like drifting mechanics um which can be frustrating for us casuals for us filthy casuals then this is a fun drift game yeah um the last game on the list is actually from the studio that made absolute drift which i didn't pull up a trailer of that but i'm going to do it real quick so absolute drift is this really really dope really zen uh drifting game that's super simple um it doesn't have hardly any texture if any texture it's almost completely top down Mm -hmm. and uh it is this game that like incentivizes you to um drift well by giving you like tipping points that you can hit with your nose if you get close going around the corner or hit with your uh bumper as you're going around the corner um and then it also has areas that will give you points for uh you know like prolonged drift so art of drift is what's on the screen right now there's those dots around the corners if you hit that while you're in your drift you get extra points you can see the little pylons that you hit to for tipping points it's very up and down, but you can see your tire tracks the whole time you're going, which is kind of cool, um, especially as you, like, get better and, like, see <laughs> what you're doing, like, in the, like, behind you. It's very, it's very cool. <laughs> um, but uh, I got into this game, I think, on a whim. Like, I saw it and was like, oh, this is, like, five bucks and it's on sale. I'm going to grab this. And uh, enjoy. Can we see some good drifting from this? What hey, the hell? Why is it all the, crashed? This is the trailer. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure the trailer is focusing on on how uh, how to do it how to how to do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Um right. it's really dope. I have a couple of runs that were in the top like 100. Um most of my runs were absolutely not. Um and it's one of those games that's super quick. Like if you failed, you could hit reset and go right to the top of the run yeah. and start over again to get yourself back into like trying to get the best possible. It felt a lot like um for those of you into like skate it felt a lot like lining up uh, a session and like hitting a few things you really wanted to hit to make it look good. And then like that being the clip. Right. Um, so that game came out and it was dope. It's made by fun selector. And then this game, the art of rally came out just a couple weeks ago and it is an absolute blast and it's beautiful. So it's the same. It's, developer. The, it's the ghost of she, uh, ghost of Shishima of fucking rally games. Basically, <laughs> like, right? It like, looked really fucking great. It looks so good. <laughs> and so like, it's still pretty low poly, but there's a lot yeah. of texture going on. There's a lot of environment and background. Um, the, like your brake pads heat up red when you hit the brakes when you're going around a turn, but this mm-hmm. game's not focused solely on drifting. It's focused on rally, which is something I had to remind myself, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'd be playing through it and you be like, I need to drift. I need to drift through this, but like, no, you kind of don't. don't. Sometimes you yeah. need to drive straight and like try and cut the best corners instead of throwing your ass out because you will fucking, especially those ninety degree junctions. Like, yeah, yeah. Some down, of those you just have to slow down and take the turn. Exactly. Right. And of course, you're going to see things in this that are this guy doing a 
180 degree hairpin and just nailing it in drift. So like there's obviously levels of skill that I haven't achieved. Um, but the game gives you big, a big open world map and lets you drive around. There's five maps. Um, I don't the remember the name of all of them. All of the cars are really, really good. And the career mode runs you through the history of rally from 1967 to 1997. Yep. And so the first one you race in is an old 1967 BMW. And then like you move into it's a, like a Cooper. Yeah. And, well, there's a mini Cooper as well. And mm -hmm. then like, you can move into like a Peugeot in 1972 and like yeah. there's vans. The open They're world also, lets um, you like collect all, things as a means of exploring. Go on. It's also worth noting that there are analogies. Uh, so they don't have any licensing for these cars, but it's quite obvious when you look at it, you're like, oh, right. That's a yeah, Lancia, sure. That's the, a Lancia uh, Delta, obviously. Yeah, the know, BMW right. is called, called the Das Auto. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> which is perfect because I know exactly what that is. Um, right. I like playing games that look pretty but i'm not generally like the kind of guy that will stop and take pictures and really try out a photo mode until i've finished a game and with the art of rally i have caught myself more often than not completely stopping what i'm doing to set up shots like realizing oh this place looks beautiful and then like backtracking and waiting until i can find the perfect shot and then capturing it and like i don't i don't really do that um playing playing games and for a racing game to just like grab that and like mm -hmm. completely yeah. completely capture my attention by it uh is pretty cool it's pretty cool i'm gonna see if i can find some of those photos because i've taken easily dozens at this point um it's definitely they, a game i'd want to play in bed sure you know Sure. Like, or on the couch or out on the front steps, just like, and turn it up or put some headphones. On. Yo, yeah. So the soundtrack's and... also really fucking good. Yeah. 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 And like, really I will peaceful. play this game to chill the fuck out. So here, I will show you some of the photos I've taken so everybody can see them on so stream. So if, if you're playing Apex before you go to bed and you need to zen out a little bit, get your heart rate down. <laughs> yeah. Do this. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Um, these are all photos I've taken through um, game capture. Uh, and like, you can, there's a photo mode, so you don't just have to like rotate the camera. Um, in fact, you probably wouldn't be able to get very many good photos if you do that. But like, I got to the, I got to the open world map that's these Japanese mountains called the Kanto Mountains. That's cool. And that's like, epic. some of these pictures I'm super proud of because like, they were just like, yep, this is a vista I need to take a picture of. And you can change filters and increase bloom and increase vignette and change the focal length and the aperture. Um, so it's got a lot of really good tools for taking pictures. Um, this I've got this one where I've got like a wheel off the ground, but you can yeah. see the back left wheel compressed and the, the brakes red hot. Um, yeah, I'm just having a lot. I parked a car like it was at, like it belonged to the house. It's just a lot of fun. Um, hmm. And so like, I think that I, for me, racing games that are my jam are games where I can just kind of get lost for a little bit and calm the fuck down. And just chill out, listen to some good tunes. And this game is absolutely that. The um, Forza and Horizon let you do that too. Forza Horizon did too. There's a German yeah. map, which is this one. It's all in the fall. It's very good. Um, and you can change the weather. So you've got like morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime, foggy, which I tried to do that for the first time I got to the Japanese one. I was like, I can't see anything. So I went back. <laughs> um, yeah, it's great. It's great. If you like playing games to chill out, like Ben said, uh, this is this is that game. I just got uh, a Norwegian snow capped like tundra mountain map that's great, and that's an that's a bleeding edge scoreboard. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, purge the games that are coming out soon. We can talk about that later. But I yeah, did sure. want to discuss while we're fresh, what is it about either these games if we played them, uh, the old classic games we talked about at the start of the episode or anything you might be playing now, what is it about the racing, specific racing loop? Because I think for all of us, it's different. That keeps you coming back. Because as we, as we can sort of discern from all that footage, a lot of the gameplay loop is extremely simple. Sure. For example, Wipeout's yeah. never changed. It even has the same weapons. Yeah, you sure. Know? And the, the tracks have always been loop-de-loops and crazy and underwater and upside down and shit. They don't really add new features. It just looks better. So I'm glad you asked this question. For me, personally, it's more about the cars and the customization of the cars. Yeah, right, right. So it's not exactly gameplay loop, because as you said, it is very simple. 
and because it's, it's only so much you can do with cars um but it's actually like the customization of it and that's why midnight club double edition is my favorite the more i can customize a car and i can i'll spend time doing that and then race it you know what i'm saying double edition was so good yeah Insanely well and cool. and like being an actual car guy where i go to car meetups and shit like that the fact that i bought a subaru got on forza before I did anything to my car and made my car exactly how I wanted it and then started actually doing that stuff in real life to it. Like I could I could build the car to what I wanted it to look like. <laughs> so then I could verify like, yep, that's it. Like doing things like that is fucking incredible. Which like, Forza you did you do that? Because I know the Horizons don't have the parts list that like Horizon 4. Horizon, Force, Horizon? Horizon 4's got a lot of a lot of customization options. It's yeah. not need for speed underground or Don't, doesn't or doesn't the main forza more. line have more up like seven or eight um uh maybe more yeah more more than likely they're gonna have stuff but that whenever it comes to like the motorsport stuff it's based on racing oh. like they do they do have other cosmetic things to make it look good but a lot of it is just like based on physics and like more focused on actual things that can happen yeah, yeah. sim you know instead of yeah uh, a barbie, instead of a barbie yeah. Yeah. Well, I gotta yeah. say, if I could have a 240Z that I built in Forza, uh, Forza Horizon 4, yeah, I, I'd be happy. Oh, the first thing I did, yeah, yeah Sergeant, I, I, I did, I just forgot that I did the same thing Sarge did when Forza mm-hmm. Horizon. We got into it. I grabbed a Ford Focus and rallied it the <laughs> fuck out. I didn't build yeah. mine because mine was standard, but like I grabbed a Ford Focus and rallied it the fuck out. I bumped the tires out like six, uh, six or eight inches, and and knocked it down and put a bunch of stuff on it. And drove that car around a lot. Um, I had a thing at the end of Forza when I found out I could I could drift. I had a whole ass thing where all I did was find cars that looked dope that I wanted to turn into drifters. And I got like an old <laughs> Toyota and customized it and put like Godzilla fucking uh, in Japanese on the side of it. I grabbed uh, an old BMW. I grabbed I grabbed a bunch of stuff just to like have a lineup of drift cars because it was my it, that was my new shit. Yep. Um, well, it, <clears throat> go ahead. Go ahead. So, like back when I started playing racing games religiously, it was back in Forza Motorsports Two. They they had like private lobbies that you can set up and public lobbies you can set up to where in the title you could say what you wanted to do in that lobby, and like so you could you could go play the you know the campaign you could race and you can get online and you can do normal races and race for money and have a good time. But like you could also join a lobby that was drift only and, you know, you would sit in a lobby and converse with those people for like, I, like I ended up making probably 40 friends on that game and we could only fit 12 people in a lobby like yeah. and but but day to day we would change like racing this day and we would do like NASCAR tracks with like Formula One cars for like 150 laps. So we'd just be in in the game, just fucking ra- like racing for over an hour, just mm. chatting, having a good time, you know. And then you know we would switch up and go and do drift, and we've made a bunch of fun drift games. So like the loops there for when it comes to like Formula One and like the NASCAR games, like those loops stay. There you can't really change that that aspect. But when it comes to like Wipeout and Forza and all those other ones, even if it's the Forza Motorsports games, that loop can be broken you can do whatever you want in those for the most part and uh and i and i feel like you know if we keep if they keep coming out with games like forza horizon and make it where it's free roam you can drive with your friends that loop's never going to exist anymore. Mm-hmm. it'll still be there for you know campaign aspect but i don't you don't have to do a single race in forza horizon and you could still earn enough money to do anything else yeah can I, ask, can I ask you guys a question what's up do you think the evolution of racing games is the combination of genres like Rocket League? Yeah. Um, yeah, the free roam for sure. Maybe. I think more for racing games specifically, it's it's open world free roam. It's people yeah. getting their cars and being able to drive around in a map and like, I mean, that's that's kind of the, the fun part about driving, right? Is knowing where you live so well that you can just drive for hours. And so like getting a game like Forza Horizon, and I never got to this point, but getting to the point where you like know the map and being like, Hey, let's head over to that one place that is over here. And like being able to get there real quick, knowing how you want to get there. Or as Sarge and I would do running through and like 
basically no without an actual notepad bullet pointing the the places we knew would be the best to do drifting and then like bookmarking them in our brain and going hey remember that one place with switchbacks uh where you're going downhill towards that town we'd be like oh yeah we'd go there and then we would just run that series of switchbacks and trying to drift them better than the other person um but like i do i do um see that what you said tech as like the evolution being the addition of other or the like the the combination of other game elements and i think that Mm -hmm. that's a good point because we got rocket league uh twisted metal was probably the first one to do something like well i know look at uh, the mario kart and crash team racing and uh, donkey kong racing or diddy kong racing um diddy kong yeah those games are all dope because they added not just racing but different elements different ways to compete um and then we've got that playstation game coming out the whatever it's called that's like that destruction derby arena where you can get knocked out of your yeah, car and like run around can't wait for that oh yeah like that I shit looks wait dope for that. that shit looks dope and so, so what may, maybe it's it's adding th- i mean i think that just broadens the genre right you always say um edm is just a, a portion of the genre right there's a lot a of name. stuff to electronic music yeah. that does yeah. not mean it's just edm so i think racing games is getting more broad because we're seeing more more applications. You know what I would like, and I I think someone's gonna take a breath to say something, but I want to say this real quick before I forget. What I would like, um, that I think would be the future of racing games is a Microsoft Flight Simulator racing game, where it's mapped out for the world. Like it's gonna be like five hundred gigabytes, right, or a terabyte, yeah. or you have game. to load a specific area and then like reinstall yeah. something yeah. else. Yeah, like a literally like street for street Google Map St. Louis. That you can pull up with your friends and you can literally race that street. Yeah, that would be dope. That would be fucking amazing to me. And if Flight Sim Flight Sim's doing it from up high, I mean it's only a matter yeah. of time, I think, before they start trying to do it down low. And like the uh the crew, which was Ubisoft's open world racing game, um, yeah. did that in some degree. Obviously, cities like St. Louis got kind of shafted <laughs> because people like Bush Stadium didn't look right. It was weird. I didn't like it. But um for people that lived in New York or Chicago or San Francisco, you'd like they they got to see their cities in pretty good detail, um, and like even even games that aren't racing specifically that are going more in detail with what the city looks like. That's one of the reasons I'm excited for Watch Dogs Legion, because like they said they one to one mapped London like they did uh, France for Assassin's Creed Unity. That's fucking dope. Yeah, that's um, insane. or playing okay. through Watch Dogs with my other uncle Andy Ben's brother. Uh, in the party while he was watching his son play and going through his commute to work, mm-hmm. which was like, yo, this is dope. Games are doing that damn thing. Um, so text text comment leads me into what he, he said. He heard me take a breath like I was about to ask something. And then he answered the question I was about to ask, which is <laughs> what would you want? What do you want that doesn't exist now? Which he just answered. Mm-hmm. You can answer again. No, that's, that's my if answer. You don't, if you don't have anything... Well, uh, which what old franchise would you want to come back? Oh, I Wipeout needs to come back. That's the easiest and fastest answer for me. But what I want, and to answer both your question, um, Ben, about what's our favorite part about racing, and your question, Tech, about what racing needs to do. To me, it's what Art of Rally is does so well. Is it it adds a soundtrack that's an actual like good fit for what you're doing, and also gets lets you get lost in what you're doing, and then um the combination of like good soundtrack good tracked it's a good soundtrack <laughs> good art and um just a good feel like art of rally is why i like racing games now right um forza horizon is was also a big part of that i would just drive around for shits actually there was a stream i don't even know if it was a stream but i was playing with the dents denton stein and dentalicious and we got cargo vans <laughs> and drove the speed limit around the map like we were delivering. So we would pull out of a place and be like, "All right, we got this delivery to Edinburgh Castle." And we would drive using all the turn using all the lanes, using the road rules, following traffic and like that's not something I think I would do all the time, but let me tell you, there was something about that that was like super soothing. We put on good music, we were chatting and talking, and it felt like driving in a convoy with friends, which like that's what I used to do on my motorcycle, right? With a bunch of people and have a microphone mm-hmm. in my ear and just talk and just hang out. Sarge and I did it around the city. Ben, you and I and um, our 
my grandparents, your parents did it around the city. Uh, that's yep. just a lot of fun. So like driving communally is super, super dope to me. So I hope that answers those two questions with the longest winded answer I could give. Sarge, what, is, I, what do you want us? Oh, my bad. Go ahead. Let me just sign out real quick. I want a cyberpunk racing game. All right, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Mm. That worked. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Everyone here was just like, mm. right? Like, could you imagine <laughs> cyberpunk? Like, it's like pure, like cyberpunk world racing. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the cars you see in the game cyberpunk, but like a dedicated racing game where you're driving through cyberpunk ass cities. With mm-hmm. like neon lights and giant fucking Yo. digital billboards and shit. With with, with synth wave music. Ah! Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Take my like, money. Take my money. Like hacking fucking... weapons and stuff like that, right? You can hack sure. your cars and yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're like overcoming music. somebody, and rather than like hitting boost, you like hack their brakes so it slows them down for a second. You jump yeah. around. Oh, dude. Yeah, I hate I hate live. really good money making ideas that we can't do anything about. I hate, imagining, I hate <laughs> imagining games that don't exist because <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I yeah. want to play that now. And it's not real. We can't impact this at all. <laughs> yeah. I can. Hey, if anyone's uh, listening to this and they're making games, get on it. Yeah. Get on it. <laughs> oh, no, talk to us first. Yeah, talk to us first. TM. Bring yeah, us TM, 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 TM. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, um, what's, what's missing? What needs to. What's missing and what's the mechanic that brings you back? Uh, I don't know. I'm there. I'm always sure. there. But what, so... what, what brings you back? What's the thing you love about it? Uh, The free roam aspect because i can jump into free roam anytime i want mm-hmm. on forza horizon i can race until somebody pisses me off and then <laughs> i can step into well i mean <laughs> and to, to tell tech pissing you off in fucking forza is whenever you have checkpoints you have to run through and this asshole shoves you out of the checkpoint and it sh- sends you like 10 seconds backwards you're behind the whole pack for the rest of the race I'm mm-hmm. like all right rage quit i'm out um but yeah, the the free roam aspect needs to needs to continue to be a thing. Like that's why I like that Forza is making a motorsports game and uh like the Horizon games to where you can play strictly this or you can play this like the racing with your own free roam. Um, I can't think of anything that I would want honestly. Yeah, um, you're pretty at home with what you've got. You love it. And and I like the sim more than anything. I like. Yeah, I, like I play, I, <laughs> I play. I play. I play. I play Mario Kart and shit like that all the time. You know, with like with friends like that, whenever I I guess when I could go to people's houses, um, and like I I enjoy that I enjoy that kind of stuff, but um, the simulation is is really what gets me. Uh, sure. So I tried then, to play uh, the the core Forza games with you a couple of times, and I remember there was a specific time you were like, "Park your car here with like ten feet of room between you and the wall, and I'm gonna drift going eighty miles an hour and." shoot that gap and i'd be like no you're not and then first try you'd fucking bomb that gap and i'd be like all right cool i'm gonna go play something i'm good at <laughs> i think i i think i had a 69 charger when i did that like the biggest fucking car in the world <laughs> yeah I just fucking cruised this boat sideways through a yeah it was through your canal i i have um, two questions park this big mac truck what i have two questions I have, I have two questions and then i'll shut the fuck up for the rest of the show you're good what the fuck it's a talk show get out of here what's up first question how come the we didn't play Forza for an exper- extended period of time? Well, because we're we're uh, we're control freak, not control freaks. By what myself. are we trying to say? We have FOMO. Something new comes out, we gotta go to go to that. Mm-hmm. Or if we really like something and we're playing something new as like a distraction, eventually we're like, oh, but I gotta get back to that thing I love. Um, yeah. I think that we all did that. We all played Forza for a while. Um, when it came out, and then we I dropped some, it, and Sarge was like, it. and Sarge was like, "Man, what the fuck? Everyone quit." And then we came back to right. it and got into it a lot, and then we all kind of organically like fell back to our OG habits. So it's I think it's a little bit of a mix of like us just playing too many games. I, I, didn't I feel, feel like, like the I had last to play time more we games, I wouldn't. I feel like the last time we played, we got more into it because like uh, I, we did the Warthog race at one time. Oh shit! Was, and oh, those long range, every, yeah, so good. Yeah, yeah, we did. We decided that you know, instead of everybody picking the, a, a separate car, we all picked the same car. So everybody had the same ground rules, except for like maybe manual and automatic transmission. Like that's it. And I feel like that went a lot better whenever we were having a private yeah. match playing together. But like, I guess just frustration happened with I guess enough people that we didn't want to continue playing that. And and that got to me to where I'm like, all right, I guess. I guess I either need to 
find a, a group of friends that's more for uh, like a hundred percent racing. Not 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 saying no, a group of friends in no. general. No, I no, laugh. No, no. I've had this thought. Like, I yeah. need I need Apex Legends group of friends, and like, yeah, yeah, sure. so like you need people that have the same amount of time in Apex as you as you do to play with. I just yeah, because. <laughs> Listen, this is side this is side note to the side note. I can't do randoms anymore. It's so it's so hard to create content with randoms. Mm-hmm. Sure. It's 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 to, it's to the point where real talk today, I joined I've already been a part of the Apex Legends Discord and like I made a post like I need people to play with. <laughs> like I need a dedicated team to play with. And I got a couple people. That's um we're just I'm still trying to test it out, see if it works, but yeah, okay. So yeah. keep going. Sorry yeah, to interrupt. There's, there's no shame no. in like look, like realizing, yo, my friends that I play with most of the time don't like this thing as much as I do, uh, and not no, like I'm... stressing them out to like play with right. you, but finding people that like do want to do that. Like, there's no, no there's no shame in that at all. Don't feel bad. Like that's uh, yeah. that's that's a good thing to do. So I love not... playing with you guys. I do, but like as a, as a person who creates for it, and like has seen some like I, I get people coming in to the stream and to the YouTube. Off of Apex, which is a very hard thing to do, I just you know, I have to find people. Sure, because I and I can't do random, I can't do randoms anymore. Otherwise, if I keep doing random, I'm going to be that person on Twitter talking negative every time <laughs> Apex tweets something. Like yeah, I right. don't want to be that person because like there's so many salty, bitter, hurt people on Twitter over Apex, and it's literally my favorite game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, yeah, and I have a lot of fun playing Apex. I just hit a wall at one point where I was like, I play this too much. <laughs> And yeah. you were, no, talking, we were talking about this the other it. day. You were like, "What you did was healthy." I like this game too much. I can't do that. And like, dude, yeah, dude, I, dude, I paid, yeah. I paid, I paid, I paid hundred. You paid a lot on, of money. Hold on, hold on, no, this week I paid one hundred and fifty dollars so this I can get week? the caustic heirloom. Oh this God. week I don't want to do it. Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, I got it. I, I don't how, want to early, about. how early in the loot boxes did you get it? No, it's like you have to buy like twenty four packs. Oh, it's, it's like the an last event. thing you, you get. It's an event collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I, yeah. and I got it. I got a YouTube video pr- premiering at five o'clock in the morning of me unlocking all of it or whatever. But like, <laughs> is it the problem. caustic one? Yeah, yeah. It's so you don't even good. play caustic that much. I've been playing it all day. Who wants it though? He wants it though. That's fucking you know, hilarious. Bad, you don't even bad, play bro. caustic. That's great. I'm so- I'm so ashamed. Of no, man, that's great. Like, it's awesome to see people that like find a game they like so much they're willing to do that, right? I'd get an Apex tattoo, dude. Like, I love, yeah, I love Apex. You should get, I love the, Apex you should get the Apex A somewhere. It'd be fucking sick. Uh, Say or, less. Or yeah, just anything Apex. You love that game, and like, there's nothing to be ashamed about. That like, that's fucking dope. A lot of people, I would imagine, bounce off oh, the games because they don't find something they love as much as you love Apex, right? So like, yeah, that's fucking dope. And to bring it back speaking, to what we're talking speaking about. Of, speaking of Apex, man, drifting games are really fucking yeah. good. <laughs> to bring it back to what I'm talking about. Um, on, on my list of friends in Forza, uh, Sergeant is the is the third lit person with 292 cars. Odin has 375 cars. Caleb has 225 cars. I have 127 cars. And Ben has 120 cars. Nice. Now, as uh, let's see here. Odin has three hundred and seventy-five uh, cars. Yes. Okay. See, and that, that, as... that's that's where the customization is so fun. Yeah. Like, you just, I just he, want to he upload. He doesn't graphics. play for the he doesn't play for the racing. I think you can the... upload your own graphics in that game, Tech. There's some graphics in that know. game that can't be made in that game. Think, no, they're think... they're they're made in the game. Yeah, I, uh, there's a special so group I've... who has that permission to do that. There's a very special group because I did research on it. I think it's like a, a group that like is accepted to allow allow to do it. Hmm. To like upload so, their own graphics on right. Forza Motorsports Five, yeah, Five. I bought a car that didn't have a locked paint job, and normally the guys that do like the really fancy ones, they lock them so people can't mess with them or do whatever they want or say that they're there. Oh, so you went and checked the layers um, and saw like, and I went and layers. I went and saw the layers, and it was capped out layers, and it was like a Halo paint job, and it literally the background was like like there was a the Halo in the background, freaking Master Chief. There was a warthog somewhere on it, and it was all layered, different pieces, like overlapping and and designed to make it look that way. So yeah, there are wild. people that spend tens of ten twenty hours on a on a paint job in a video game. So I want to bring it to this point because I feel like Forza is the biggest racing game in the last two years. Am I mistaken? It's no, no. it's huge. It's huge. There's, okay. there's nothing competing with it right now. 
the number one person, and I have about a hundred or two hundred people on my face on my Xbox friends list. The number one person of game of time played in Forza is Sarge, and it's ninety five hours. And to me, that's low. Yep, it is yeah. very low. And and like if I have a hundred, two hundred people, definitely a hundred between hundred and two hundred. That's a really low number. Mm-hmm. And this and the second. The third has been with six with fifty hours. Uh, Caleb, you have thirty nine hours, and I have thirty one hours. Why are the numbers so low? If 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 we love racing games and 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 all that, is it the simplicity of the game? Is it does it does it run quick? I think it's the I think the loop is gratifying immediately and for uh, a non extended period of time for me. Like I will play a racing game for. 10, 20 hours in a couple of weeks and be good for a while because you know it's not my like it's not my tent pole it's not what I come back to um, mm-hmm. whereas like you could look at my Rocket League and I've got hundreds of hours in that because I really fuck with that game so like I think it's just that like like I was saying earlier racing games largely for most of my you know time playing games racing games haven't been my quote unquote shit uh, Your shit yeah yeah it's just been like Oh yeah, this is dope. This is fun, and I'll play it for a couple dozen hours, and then let it sit for. That's what we did with uh, Horizon. Sarge and I played it when the day it came out for a couple of weeks, and then I fell off of it, and then we got back into it and played it for a couple of weeks, and then fell off of it. It's like a, it's like a bump for me. Like I, I, I will be like, you know what? I want to play a racing game, and then I'll get my fix and be like, right. <laughs> yeah, you scr- you, the itch is scratched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, back in the '90s, all the video game magazines and Ben. Uh, hopefully, you can back me up on this. Um, well, there was a, a t- category in every ratings called replayability. Sure. Yeah. I remember that. Right. You remember that? Like that was yeah. a big thing. Like all the games, like, okay, you have this game. Here's all of it. Is it worth replaying? And I feel, and, and is it, is it that sports like racing games just don't have that high replayability? Like you play it a few, a few hundred, a few, like a hundred hours, obviously nineties, the highest number of Forza, which is one of the biggest games <laughs> of the last two years. Is it because the loop is so simple that you that it just doesn't retain like like Avengers? Mine doesn't have to do with the loop. Mine has to do with people to play with. Sure. Like like and I've I've told these I've told you guys multiple times. If I look on my Xbox and nobody's online, I don't even get online sometimes. Yeah. Like if if like my, my normal group to play with is not online, I'm just like yeah, probably I don't feel like playing anything and trying to find like something else, you know. But so like. Forza, my numbers are low because unfortunately none of you guys play it. It's funny because your numbers are high on my list. It, they're, no, they're high. Yeah, they're high on your list just because you don't have you yeah, know, you friends that play racing games. Yeah. But like, if you look at like the highest number, like, there's people out there that had your hours of Apex and Forza and my hours of Rocket League on Forza that pay that play this game like every day yeah. religiously because that's their jam. You know, but if I had if I had a group of six people that played that game every day, I'd be I would probably be on that more than I am anything else. I would yeah, love to talk about though. that one day. I'm yeah, sorry, I, go ahead, Ben. No, I, I'm just bouncing off that exact thought. I think there's a lot of racing games I would love to play, but just don't. I've I've I own probably five, six, or seven of them. Everything from Wipeout clones to to actual car racing ones. It's just uh, something about them doesn't bring me back to play with them mm-hmm. versus would would probably do that you know i i played uh i forgot the name of it i played a wipeout clone with terry uh one of our xbox friends for a few hours and then i never touched it again so yeah i don't know Something one of things, that one of the things that i find wildly interesting that maybe we can talk about on the podcast episode is like uh game loyalty mm-hmm. yeah sure sure right I mean, you guys are variety gamers. I will put you in a category of variety gamers. Yep. Yeah, I have a hard um, time. I have a hard time singling um, for too long because I do this right, and like I, I want to write about and talk about what's coming out and be what be relevant. And so, like, I feel like if I had less of a drive to like be a journalist and be invested in like the gaming industry as it's happening, then I would have a game or two or three that were my 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 standbys. And like even now. I will be distracted from playing something because like, oh shit, Sarge and Jabril are playing Rocket League. I'm gonna hop on Rocket League tonight instead of getting through this game I want to get through. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Which is why I'm kind of glad for streaming because I've been u- I've been using it for a while to get through stuff that like is single player that I ordinarily wouldn't get through. I played Ghost of Tsushima all the way through on stream, um, and like if I had not made that like the thing I was doing, I don't know if I would have done it. Uh, I'm playing. I've put thirty hours into Hades in the last like two weeks. I'm I'm in love with that game. But if I had played that game by myself, um, at night only, right when my friends are on. Ben would hop on and be like, let's play Squadrons. And I don't mm-hmm. have the the self-control to be like, no, nah, like I want to hang out with my friends. And and so like when Ben's like, yo, let's play this, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's do it. When Sarge is like, yo, let's play this, I'm like, all right, let's go. Um Well, so I wonder yeah. if a racing game needs the story pull to go to Tsushima and got away. <laughs> I've always I've always wanted a we, racing we ignored game. it with fast and the furious of the game we ignored it yeah, we did we did we did <laughs> we didn't I, also give a fuck read about that, it. I also read that that game was poopy um but then <laughs> i saw people play it and it was like this looks shock. good though um but no i've I've, I've legitimately been like why is there not a racing game with a legit story where like you play well, the it, young it guy is. that's the new guy on the team and you have to like go to press conferences and talk and argue with like your even if it's like an F one game and you have to GTA argue with the race. other, they do, they do have that. Yeah, sure. exactly that. Sure, you can right. you can make yourself look bad by 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 like responding terribly to it to an interview question. Sure, or make or make yourself look good because you can be like, yeah, I did it all out there, and then like your team hates you, like the <laughs> the mechanics hate you, or you nope. can be like, yeah, yeah, the mechanic, you know, the, the crew team did effort. really well this time, yeah, and it was a team effort, and then like. It it says your respect rises or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're seeing that in sports games more. I mean, we're definitely seeing that in sports games more. Oh but no, I think, that's huge. I in think sport, that's dude. I think that's one of the progressions I'd like to see is more of that in like racing and things because like you've got the road to the show and MLB the show where you start. Yeah. You should just start as a player and play through, and now you've got like post game interviews and like interacting with your coaches, and you've got to build relationships with players on your team and. Mm-hmm. players on mm-hmm. rival teams to build rivalries and shit and you get bonuses by stoking rivalries or playing on the field at the same time as one of your like best friends which is fucking same, cool football does the same thing, the NBA, same thing. NBA is doing the same it, thing and they do they do it with like they've been doing it for years and they've been doing it with celebrities we're like where's like, uh, dawson will walk in a room and it's her character likeness yeah. and her voice yeah michael b jordan was the uh spike lee directed the last year last yeah, year's Mahershala, game Mahershala ali was in uh the nfl game in the what was that called what was the NFL storyline called in Madden? Um, I don't even know. Long shot. Long shot. Mahershala okay. Ali was your was your high school coach. For those of you who don't know, Mahershala Ali was the guy that played Cottonmouth and Luke Cage. Um, among other things. He's tremendously among talented. many things, many He's things. gonna be he's gonna be Blade in, in the Marvel Universe That's right. next. Um Yeah. Got like, so much to talk about on that on on the entertainment front. So I can't much. wait for the next <laughs> like next uh Nerdy bit show because we have so much to talk about. Yeah, twenty twenty one is gonna be a fucking banger, y'all, for movies and entertainment. It's gonna be all the shit that didn't come out this year is gonna come out next year, and it's just gonna be a, a good year of content. Yep, save your save your fucking pennies. Um, but we're at the, the about the ninety minute mark. Um, do we mm-hmm. have any other closing arguments we wanted to bring up, or can we have Ben look up his his fun fact? I say let's button up this. Uh, gift. Dude, Dirt Five and... comes out on November fifth. I'm gonna come so hard. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Dude, I'm okay, so then. fucking excited for that game, Drew. I'm I hate so to excited. see it. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna play it for like I'm gonna I'm gonna play it for 12 hours though. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll play for a little bit. Um, that's funny as fuck. So before we wrap up and before we identify uh, all our social media and stuff, we have a little segment. It's our Smurf Fact segment where we give you a fun fact to take home and chew on. Ben finds facts because he's got the best Google Foo skills. What do you got for us, Ben? Let's play the intro real quick. Smurf facts, oh yeah. All right, what you got, homie? The world's total population is around seven and a half. Obviously, that number sounds huge. However, it might feel a little more manageable once you learn that every single one of those people stood shoulder to shoulder. They could all fit in the 500 square miles that is Los Angeles. Wait, how what? many? Uh, you the mic went out when you said the number of people. You said seven and a half billion. Seven half seven. Do you want, uh, should I read the whole thing all over again? No, no, just no. Just, part, uh, just yeah, one part just went out. Uh, the seven and a half billion people. Okay. There you go. That's yeah. That's what we didn't hear. Uh, that's all we didn't hear. Billion. That's so, insane. So if seven and a half billion people stood shoulder to shoulder. They could fit in L.A. Yeah. No, I mean, California. Metro, no, L.A. The metro area, five hundred square miles. That's insane, bro. bro that's insane. <laughs> you know what that means? 
that means that we are mismanaging the land. Our race, Everything. Yeah, and people are like, we're overpopulating. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Wyoming but I've always, got I've, nobody. <laughs> I've always thought that that's not true because, like, as soon as you hit 30 minutes out of St. Louis, it's open land. Yep. Yeah. It's it's land. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, like, it's that's crazy. I but think, I believe uh, it. Yeah, that, that's, that's, uh, I don't know how to brand it, but the overpopulation thing, there's, that's a, that's a specific argument. Um, book, there have been entire books written about it. Politicians yeah. still say it. I mean, if you, uh, if you did the math, I'm pretty sure Wyoming has like one person per like 50 or like 100 square miles. Hey, yeah. Some governments work to co- uh, control the population, and that's, Got, hey, hey, <laughs> we got space. Yeah. We got space, we got space for you. That's not even I... counting all the. That's not even counting all the water. For some reason, how serious tech got for a second fucking got me, dude. I don't know why. <laughs> I just couldn't control myself. We oh, got shit. space for you. We got space for you. Oh uh, man! Speaking of space, why don't we tell people the spaces they can find us if they wanted to find us? Uh, you can find me at Lovewub on Twitter. You can follow anything Nerdy Bits does at nerdybits.com or on Twitter at nerdy underscore bits. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash nerdy bits or buy a t shirt with the dope ass logos and shit we got at nerdybits.threadless.com. Um, mm-hmm. We upload these on Friday, so catch them there on podcast services around the globe. Um, ben, where can people find you? Everywhere at Sketch Sawyer, and I have a trade paperback coming out tomorrow. Yay. Fuck yeah! Uh, Sarge, where can people find you? Sergeant Sodium, most places. <laughs> <laughs> most places, not all though, because I'm not a sucker. Uh, and Tech Supreme, where can the people find you? All right, look, I'm gonna get very specific. You can only find me on Twitch. At Tech Supreme and YouTube at Tech Supreme because Facebook is trash. So <laughs> Twitter is okay. And Twitter's okay. And Twitter's okay. But Tech Supreme on Twitter. It's all okay if you're an okay YouTube. person. You know, but what if That's you're an okay person bumping into not okay people? Hurt people. And hurt people hurt people. Just shut it down and get back hurt to work. Hurt people hurt people. Make deep, fake deep. If guns don't pill, kill people, people kill people, then toasters don't. Or fuck. Then <laughs> toasters don't toast, 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 toast. <laughs> and always trips me up all the fucking time. Um, well, thanks for listening, everybody. I'll be on streaming after this playing something, hopefully with some of the folks here on stream. Uh, thank you nope. to... Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> nice. Thank you to No Taker for our theme song, Into the Light, off the EP Pathfinder. We get our music from Monster Cat. Go to Monster Cat. They make dope shit. Um, we'll catch you guys next week, though. Yeah? Bye. Bye. <laughs> and I love you. Bye. And, I, and he loves you. <laughs> serious, get serious. <laughs> serious, they're going on. Peace.